foundation of the masculine pillar of mercy of the tree of Sephiroth is largely the feminine Sephira Netzach, while the foundation of the pillar of severity is the androgynous Sephira Hod. The name Hod is translated as majesty or glory and is derived from the verb root meaning beauty, glory, and majesty. Just as the unity of Bina, passing through Tiferet, is reflected in the mirror of Netzach, the totality of ideas, the highest wisdom of Hokma, finds its refraction in the form of the Sephira Hod. This mirroring reflection, which takes place behind the veils, is expressed in the medieval image of Baphomet with crossed legs, among the symbolic content of which is this transformation, the change of the position of forces. Therefore, the general idea of this Sephira is related to intellect, understanding, as an instrument of private knowledge, acting as a restraining force towards the integrating manifestations of Netzach. Once again, it should be noted that Hod expresses precisely the practical reason, the ability to find methods and ways of solving problems. This is precisely the lower manifestation of the eidetic nature of Hokma, as stated in the Sefer Yetzera. The eighth path is called absolute or perfect intelligence because it is the instrument of the primordial. The shadow of the understanding of Hod is the clipper of small, fossid, which appears when reason passes through Sha'ari Mawet, the gates of death. Through these gates, defects of the mind, destructive forces related to the informational component penetrate into consciousness, and therefore the name of the leader of the demonic sphere, Samuel, poison of God, Fossard, indicates that conscious or unconscious substitution of concepts, distortion of ideas and concepts, often underlie the destruction of consciousness. Samuel is the great biblical serpent tempter, seducing with knowledge. At the same time, the activity of Samuel is predominantly expressed at the emotional level, his striving for Fossard is instinctive and arises from distorted tendencies towards self-preservation and self-assertion. In the sphere of the mind itself, the distorted qualities of Hod manifest themselves in the form of another well-known demonic image, Adramelech. This demon, whose name means King of Glory, or Glorious King, is a distortion of the divine principle of creation, the very practical knowledge that the energy of Hod provides. According to biblical traditions, Adramelech was one of the deities to whom human sacrifices were made. The Sephavites burned their children in the fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sephavaim, 2 Kings 17 verse 31, and burning children, as in other cases, specifically meant the destruction of a person's creative and procreative abilities. The famous demonologist Colin de Plancy, 1794-1881, believed, based on Talmudic traditions, that the demon's name was composed of words meaning, to carry, and king, i.e., meaning, king carrier, or, king of carriers, and therefore claimed that Adramelech was depicted in the form, or with the head, of a mule, possibly a horse. According to another interpretation, Adramelech means, king of adornments, which is why the demon was also attributed the appearance of a peacock. Based on this, in his Infernal Dictionary, de Plancy depicted a Dramalek with a human body, a mule's head, and a peacock's tail. Both translations can be used in interpreting the functions of the demon Black Mercury. On the one hand, the translation, King of Glory, refers to the Sapphira of Hod and Adramelech's connection to its shadow. Glory, in the demonic sense is precisely external pomp, ostentatious shine, seeming grandeur, stemming from a distorted, false understanding. The peacock aspect of the king of decorations, likewise speaks to the same aspiration to construct deceptive and attractive informational structures. In this sense, Adramelech is a demon of manipulation, misinformation, the use of half-truths or skillfully twisted data for gain. And it can be said that the entire modern system of mass media is under Adramelech's complete control. The association with transfer speaks to the way in which this manipulation is carried out by the demon, by shifting accents, transferring the weight of meaning from more important details to less important ones, rearranging facts, and thus obtaining a false picture. If Samuel blocks cognitive activity with the illusion of knowledge, being stuck in duality, scholasticism, and shallow logic, 
then Adramelech does so by promoting false understanding, a prideful sense of, I know how things really are, the exclusion of self-checks, and a reduction in self-criticism. In both cases, the result is, falsehood, poison, or, toxic, knowledge that diverts from the path and hinders development. The idea of media fame and hype achieved through any means, often unrelated to honesty, as a value imposed, links Adramelech to another demonic king, Paimon, the king of glamour. While the illusion of knowledge puts it in connection with other demons from Ashtaroth's retinue, Gusion, Bathin, and Stolas, and a disregard for understanding links it with the Asmodos retinue, Person, Marax, and Sabnok. However, unlike these private destructors, Adramelech expresses the principle of manipulating information as such, regardless of tasks and motives. Of course, as a demon of the rational sphere, he is calculating and not alien to logic, but his main motive is to elevate himself by presenting exclusive information, even if it has nothing to do with the truth. A person falls under the influence of Adramelech whenever they start coming up with clever evasions to either prove their point or avoid being accused of a mistake, when they try to use scraps of information that have come their way for their own benefit without thinking about how it will affect others. The race for news, scandals, and gossip that is so characteristic of modern mass media are typical manifestations of Adramelech's activity. Opposing Adramelech, of course, primarily involves honesty, responsible handling of information both in terms of its sources and its consumers, the demonopolization of knowledge, and its wide dissemination for the benefit of all.